And this is a show all about the writing process from creation to publication. And here is where you can find inspiration, ideas, and the best part, meet the people behind the stories. I like to say that we bring life to books and so much more. Now, if you have a question, if you're watching during the interview live, you can put it in the comments and we'll do our best to answer it. And we'll track these things after the show as well in case you do want to uh, have your question answered. Now, to stay up to date on shows, you can check them all out on YouTube at Katherine Taylor TV and also on Facebook at Katherine Taylor Media for those of you who are not seeing the show live. Now, are you curious about ketogenic cooking or ketogenic lifestyles and possibly the weight loss journey of my guests today? It's been pretty amazing, and they have such a wonderful story to, to tell, but they also have two uh, wonderful, wonderful cookbooks uh, called East Coast Keto 1 and 2. So I want to welcome them to the show, and uh, Bobby and... Jeff Pike, and it takes a little second for them to come up, but uh, they are coming. There they are. Hi. Hi. <laughs> so nice to see you again. It was about a year ago when I went online live with these shows, and you were one of my first um, guests when we took the show from the studio right on to uh, Facebook Live. And uh, so here we are a year later. Back again. And back again, and I have a. I have, this was the first cookbook, um, East Coast Keto. I call it one, but it's your your basic Bible. And this one just arrived today, um, and I have been going through it, mouth watering. The photography is amazing. So you guys, you're you're out on the East Coast. I'm here in Central Newfoundland. Where exactly are you located? We're in CBS, just outside St. John's. We're in beautiful downtown Topsail. Topsail. <laughs> Where no doubt the sun is shining and it, the weather is exceptionally warm. The sun is shining, uh, exceptionally warm, maybe not so much. Not yet. It's coming. It's coming. And you've got a couple of the family here with you. I think Squiggles and Isadora. Yep. This is Isadora. Oh. Sweetie and squiggles. Oh, well, I know I've got my, my poo princess is behind me, but she's sleeping. She's not an active member of the uh, interview here today, like your dogs. So it's been a year, Jeff and Bobby. What has happened? A new cookbook. Fill me in a little bit. You know, we've, we've been having so much fun developing recipes. East Coast Keto One was all about all of our home recipes, about the, you know, the Jigs Dinner type meals that mom and dad made. Whereas opposed to East Coast Keto Two is more us expanding or really showing you more of our repertoire in the way that, uh, for example, our uh, honey garlic spare ribs. Uh, beef burritos, uh, you know, things that we do outside of the typical East Coast kitchen that are, you know. Not just meat and potatoes. Not just meat and potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, we're going to get a little more into the food. But in the beginning, like in the opening of your books, you, you talk about what got you on this journey to keto and taking our East Coast food that we all love and ketofying it. Um Maybe for those who haven't, who don't know about your journey, I know there have been plenty of people who do, especially with 5,000 people plus on your Facebook page, but how did this all come about? So, you know, we've both always been thin people, and when we got together, I think it was just in that time of our life when, you know, weight gain started to happen, we got, a, we, we were very happy. We've always been foodies. But we got a little bit too happy, as in we were expanding and expanding. And I was I was getting to the point where if I if I went to school with you and I ran into you out in the mall, for example, I would I was physically embarrassed about myself, and that's never a nice place to be. And for me, the the nutshell kind of happened um, sometimes through my art world, where we're asked to be Newfoundland ambassadors, and we were uh, doing such an event. 
there was a bunch of fancy smancy chefs from all over the world and I was to be one of the escorts who would chat and talk and entertain and we were hiking at at this particular time and I was literally gasping because I guess my size and and you know I, I do have asthma and for me it was the enough is enough you know I I need to take better care of myself and that's when we really started to research we went to talk to our family doctor and she pointed us luckily in the right direction wow and jeff you you are the sidekick so you were all for all this yourself and came right on board 100 uh, percent i mean we've always been foodies and loved food and this basically enabled us to take our love of food and turn it around on its head and still be able to enjoy the food for what it is. And it, it, it really is just real food. Just real food. Mm. Taste. The taste is amazing. And, you know, since we um, chatted, I have been into this book so much. And actually, I mean, a lot of what I eat is very much based on keto, but my husband has a real sweet tooth, and I thought, okay, if he's going to be like this, I'm going to try making him some of these wonderful desserts, and that's what I was working on over, I don't know, the past few months. If he wanted a dessert, I would cook it up out of here, and oh, man, like the chocolate with the, like the cherry blossom. I'm sorry. I have to say this. It's so good. Awesome. <laughs> you know, one of, the, one of the things that we're trying to teach people for us women in particular, we've gone through our whole lives feeling food shame and food guilt. And, you know, it's, it's almost come to the point where you have a bad day, you go eat something that quote unquote, you're not supposed to eat and it makes you feel worse. And our whole approach is, is just trying to free everybody of that. You can have the dessert if you want, if you just tweak your recipes a little tiny bit, like we have done in our, both of our cookbooks, you can have your piece of dessert after supper and it's not going to affect your waistline. It's not going to affect your, your blood glucose level. And you know, there's none of those mental games up there where you have to beat yourself up because you had something sweet. Absolutely. And when you, when you say the mental game, it's, it, it is so prevalent these days. And I was actually looking at a, a blog post uh, last week about someone who had gone through that. She had gone through Miss Universe pageants and just how much people were made to feel bad about their body or what they ate. And it can become such a huge issue for people. Um, but this is, but you have helped solve some of this problem. And I know it didn't happen overnight. There's so much work has gone into these books. And this is a show where, where we do talk about the making of books amongst other things. How was it? You made your first cookbook, but how about the second one? You know, was it an easier process? It, it was really because we had already had all the groundwork in place in regard to knowing how to we get, the rules. get the editing done ahead of time. The first time when we went through the process, you know, we literally just sent everything in. And of course, there was a lot of, of work in the beginning to get everything fine tuned. But I had a lot of that done this time. So, uh, you know, learning as we go. Mm -hmm. but and as, it's as far as the, the creative side of things go, that's that's where your artistic talent comes in. And it all started with we would put together a, a absolutely fabulous plate of food for us to enjoy. And we'd end up taking a picture and, and sharing it. And other people are saying, Oh my God, what did you make there? That looks amazing. And it just kind of snowballed from there. Yeah. And, yeah. and in the first book, East Coast Keto snowballs through my that. <laughs> They're in there. <laughs> so the photography in the books, you've, you've done this yourself? Yes. There, yes. There are Bobby yep. has. Oh my gosh. Yep. Because, uh, well, I do have photographs I'm going to put up, but I don't want to jump into them right away. But I mean, the photography is amazing in here. It's mouthwatering. And I think that's a nice part of a, a cookbook is to actually see it in front of you and be inspired by it. I, too, can make this. And you've kept it easy. So how did you ketofy things that we love to eat? 
You know, building your keto pantry is uh, is something that we recommend that you do over time. The same as keto itself. So many people start keto and they go out and they spend hundreds and I'm hundreds of dollars and, and go cold turkey. And, and then in two days, they're kind of upset with themselves because they haven't lost the weight. And, you know, really... It's, it's not really like you have a, a fat spigot here that you can just turn the dial and all the fat pours out. If, if you want to do this, like keto is all about quality and quality takes time. And it's the same thing as, as keto in your pantry in that, you know, one week you, you go out and, and, you know, buy yourself some almond flour and the next week, um, you know, buy, buy yourself some coconut sauce, which is a, a replacement that we use for, for soy sauce. Um, and you know, the recipes were really, really that our, our process is I will take, I, I have all of my grandmother's old cookbooks and I use those a lot for inspiration. Um, so I'll take one of Nan's recipes and, and it's pretty cool. Like I have some of her handwritten sheets. Uh, for example, there's a cake in there where not only, uh, is the name of the cake, the person who she got it from, but her phone number is up in the top corner. So she could remember to call her to get last minute instructions, but I take Nan's recipes and I would kind of tweak them and, for example, use the almond flour instead of regular flour. Um, then I would put them forward to, uh, we would test them ourselves. And our last roadblock is always, I'll take the recipe and I'll pass it over to him and I'll step out of the way. And the goal here is for him to be able to totally recreate the recipe without having to check with me and say, Bobby, what do you mean by this? Because, you know, we realize that so many people have this in their kitchen and, you know. I'm the quality control. You're the quality <laughs> control, exactly. Yeah. Well, you know, having used the book, you've done an excellent job at keeping it clear and simple. And I think you've, you've, even the ingredients are not too hard to get hold of. Sometimes there are a few things that are a bit challenging or I have to, to look up because I'm not familiar with that ingredient. But in general, you've kept it very simple and um, easy to do. Well, our whole brand is is approachable and, and down to earth. And you know what? We can all throw it. doesn't have to cost a fortune. We can all throw it fancy smancy words and, and you know, and get all, you know, educated kind of thing. <laughs> but at the end of the day, we're just regular people the same as everyone else. And that's what we're trying to teach people is a, is that you know we're not we're not fancy chefs we're just everyday people and you can do this too mm, and you can do it and beautifully i i um i tried to make those oh i tried to get an ice ice cube tray and make the chocolates in in those mine probably weren't as pretty as yours but darn they they tasted so good <laughs> One of our sayings is, unless the queen is coming, they don't have to look perfect. And I don't think the queen is doing a lot of traveling these days. So. No, <laughs> not my way. <laughs> so now as you're, you're doing this, you've built a lot of people who follow you. And you're, so you also are coaches to people who are trying to learn the keto lifestyle. And do you take on individuals? I know you work in a group setting. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, we offer individual coaching um, and they're available through our shop online at eastcoastketo.com. Uh, we offer packages, everything from a 15 minute quickie right on up to a business consult that can take a couple of hours. And uh, month long, once a week, check in, give you, here's, here's a meal plan to follow or some, some sample. Um, check in once a week and, and go from there. And you know that, I mean, that can be so helpful to people. How many people are on your Facebook page? Almost 6,000. We're just just above 5,900, I believe. And, of course, our, our public page as well has, uh, has quite a few followers. And, and yeah, you know, there, there are people around the world in, in Germany and, and France and, and London who are following the East Coast Keto way of living. And, and that's pretty cool. That is pretty and, cool. And since January, we've been... Uh, running a month long, we call it a, a reboot session, which is kind of like a keto boot camp where it, it's a premium package for, for four weeks. We give you uh, meal plans. There's secret recipes that are not published either on the website or in our books. And we do cook alongs, we do, we do yoga everything. sessions. So it's, it's pretty <laughs> everything exciting. there. So that's all part of your, your group that's a membership based 
And then there's the open space for people to come in and just get their feet wet. What are some of the biggest questions people ask you about keto or the biggest hitches they have with um, keto lifestyle? Where do I find fill in the blank? Yeah, um, you know, here here on the East Coast, one of, one of the, the main reasons other than trying to help people is, is um, you know, trying to source ingredients. For example, we use we use pork rinds as uh, breading. If you look at our best ever bread of chicken, we take pork rinds, which really is just puffed up pig skin. And when we started this journey, they were not to be found here in Newfoundland anywhere. Uh, we use a lot of, of vegetables that just are a little bit different. For example, a uh, celery root or a celery egg. Um, if you've probably seen it in, in your grocery store, it looks like a, a turnip with a Rastafarian hair. Mm -hmm. and, and when we started this journey, you could not find those here on the island anywhere. But, you know, we, and now the stores have trouble keeping them in stock. And now they have trouble keeping them in stock because our people are going out in mass looking for those ingredients. Yeah, well, you know, that's that's the thing when you when I do go or travel, I often do come back with ingredients and food items such as different flowers or things that I can't readily get here. I mean, you can get almond flour, but if I want to throw in something a bit different, then that's what I'm looking for when I go, those specific things. So I'm probably not alone, but it's so good that our grocery stores are expanding to carry more of these things, certainly. Yeah, they're, well. absolutely, they're absolutely fabulous. At the end of the day, the grocery stores want to sell products to you. And, and if you go now, I don't recommend you, you know, ask the cashier or you ask the young fellow who's stocking the shelves because really they're doing their job. They want to go home at the end of the day. What you got to do is you got to find the produce manager or the meat manager and say to them, OK, I, I need this. Can you bring it in for me? And and nine chances out of 10, they're, they're, they're more than happy to accommodate. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and what about the an, pardon? An internal banter that we have all the time. I'm I'm the interrupting cow. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys have such a great um, relationship together. And I think the fact that you're on this journey together and I guess, Jeff, that you get to be the litmus test for everything. You know, you've really made it a part of your lifestyles. And that's, I think, also part of the appeal of what you do. You, you make it look so much fun. you got to have fun. I mean, and, and food, it, it doesn't have to be complicated. And, and most of the recipes are very uncomplicated. Um, a lot of them, some, we have some people look at them, oh, my God, there's, there's a, an ingredients list a mile long. It's not hard. Well, if that's if if that that a mile long is a half a teaspoon of onion powder, a half a teaspoon <laughs> of garlic. I mean, that's pretty pretty fast, fast, fast. We do uh, we do cook lungs. We're just about to start our summer schedule now, and uh, once a week we do cook along. So we put up a, a meal. I think our first one is going to be caprese chicken, which is absolutely mm. delightful. And what we do is we send out the ingredients list first, the mise en place first, which really is just a fancy smancy chef term for having everything in its place. <laughs> Everybody gets everything all set up. We meet online and we cook together and it is so much fun. Mm. Live TV, anything can happen. You never know. What's going on. <laughs> I've done some of those, those uh, type of events and actually with the East coast um, or the, theater out there in St. John's. I can't think of their name right now. But I've, I've done some of their Friday night where you cook the meal. And unfortunately, I'm not in range of having the ingredients delivered, but you can still do it. So now I got to add you guys to that list. I'm going to have to cook along with you. I just want to bring up uh, a few photographs here. And I don't know if you can see this one, but it's you and Jeff, Bobby and Jeff in front of, you look like you're at a trade show, I think. I believe that picture there, we're in Grand Falls, Windsor, out in your neck of the woods. Excellent. Oh, right. the, at the culinary <laughs> event in the summer. You got it. Perfectly. Yeah. No. Exactly. But I think what we really want to tease people with here are some of those uh, food photos. So we are going to show that next. Here we go. All right. What is this? <laughs> We can't see the pictures. Oh, so you can't can see it? Okay, I'm going to describe it to you. It's chicken. It almost looks like a teriyaki sauce. And you're dipping that's the, the That's our shed sauce. So if anyone is used to going to the chalet, that lovely dipping sauce that they have on the side, 
Mm -hmm. And we don't have a lot of chal chalets in Newfoundland on the East Coast, but we do have a lot of sheds. So there you when go. you taste that, that's going to take you right back to the chalet. And, you know, again, it's a, it's a guilt-free version of something that we're already used to. Right on. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what's up next. It's dessert. And it looks like a cake, almost like a layered cake. Um, I wish you could see these photos. So anyway, suffice to say, I'm going to do the commentary, I guess, but this is an example of a keto dessert. And if you're watching this and you don't like this, what's not to like? And then this one is you in the kitchen, Bobby, and you've got a pan. It's in. Your, it's actually in your cookbook. I think it looks like uh, almost like cabbage rolls. Here you and are. Cabbage rolls. And, and for me, a lot of the recipes, I spoke about Nan. But for me, um, a lot of the recipes are really a, a, a great big memoir because I can remember standing in the kitchen as a little girl watching my mom make those cabbage rolls. When I started keto, of course, we don't eat rice. So I, I figured, you know, that's one thing that I'm never going to be able to taste again. But as you can see, we've mastered it. They are so much like my mom's ca uh, cabbage rolls that the first time I tasted them, I, I, I got teary eyed. I got teary eyed. <laughs> It's amazing how you can substitute things for um, other things that we're used to, and it still tastes great, like a pizza on a on a cauliflower crust. And don't even miss the bread. In fact, you like it better. It yeah, feels we're better. not fans of the cauliflower crust. You know, no. I mean, we have a lot of people in our community who love them, but you know, just to use the expression for us, it's kind of like putting lipstick on a pig. It's still going to be a pig, and. We're we're just it's good though. <laughs> <laughs> now we now we do have some recipes that we really enjoy. Like for example, right now I'm working on uh, East Coast Keto Three, and there's a whole roasted cauliflower. But the difference is for for that one there. When I taste that, I know it's cauliflower. And but if I have a pizza, I don't want to taste that cauliflower. I want to taste pizza. So what we do have is our skinny face pizza crust. Mm -hmm. And uh, that one, I'm going to challenge anybody out there in the outside world to try that crust and tell me that it's not delicious because it channel. is absolutely delightful. Yeah, it's I'm going to do it. Too, and on the YouTube channel. We show you, walk you right through how to make it. Yep. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to definitely check that out. And this here now looks like your breakfast pizza that I have up on the screen. I think that's what you called it. Mm. Yep. Yummy, so, yummy. You know what? It, everybody loves leftover pizza for breakfast. Um, and you can do that. You can make the pizza ahead of time and, you know, just have a leftover the next morning. But in, in our uh, pizza crust recipe, we recommend you make uh, three small pizza crusts. And one of ours, when we do the recipe, we always put some aside to do that breakfast pizza. And, you know, uh, a little bit of tomato on there, a nice egg in the middle, some bacon. Boy, I tell you what, you're in breakfast heaven. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a great morning after solution there for sure, looking at you. And then I actually had up here the crepes. It looks like a strawberry crepe with a little bit of chocolate on the side. Mm. That's, the, that's the strawberry hazelnut. crepes with hazelnut spread. And, and, of course, we're all used to going to the supermarket and getting that little jar of hazelnut. And, unfortunately, it's not just hazelnuts in there. Mm. We, we try to teach people that keto is always ingredients first, meaning, uh, you know, you should take every product that you eat and turn it around and look in the back because there's a big difference between product and food. To us, food is a piece of meat or a piece of fish or vegetables. Anytime you pick up a product, you kind of got to look and see what's in there because guarantee you there's stuff hiding in there. So, yeah, that hazelnut spread that you buy in the grocery store. There's a lot more than hazelnut. Is it chemical crap stuff? <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. Walk around the outer edges, stay out of those in, inside aisles where everything is. And that's a big thing that I've learned over the years is to, to look at labels. If you can't pronounce it, <laughs> you can't spell it, be wary of that. And, and, and you know, our foods are filled with things like that. And trying to get back to eating whole foods is one of the things I do love about your cookbooks and the keto lifestyle. looks like I have burritos maybe up here now and uh, something with tomato sauce. They look really good. I'm getting hungry. Yeah, the, the burritos are absolutely amazing. That's one of the recipes that 
I, I kind of brought to the table. You kind of brought to the table. We tweaked it together tweaked it. and then we tweaked it to keto. And, and we use, uh, there's some Mexican beef in there that we, uh, we make. And we've used that on nachos. We've used it for chimichangas. We've used it, you know, for a, a multitude Burritos. of- Burritos, we put some in our chili. We put some in our chili. Yeah. Wow. So how much time, I mean, this looks like a little appetizer here. It looks like a scallop, almost a, a Japanese presentation, a scallop on a, on a, a sauce. On a yeah. Most of us are so used to having scallops with a bacon wrap around them, and those are nice. But what usually happens is in order to cook the bacon properly, you kind of got to cook the the crap out of what he said. Out of the scallops. So uh, if you follow that recipe, I promise you it's going to be the, the the tastiest scallops you've ever tasted before in your life. They are. Quite yeah, good. and I I definitely don't like overcooked scallops. We're big on our seafood here, and I even eat them raw right out of the ocean sometimes. <laughs> and there's my little dog, Salty. When the cookbook arrived, he told me he was going to try the keto lifestyle. Cool. <laughs> so this is wonderful. So, what, you know, how much of your week are you spending in the kitchen? As much as we can. <laughs> Luckily, we enjoy working in the kitchen um, and we enjoy working together. And, you know, it's, it's funny because when one of the, when we were doing the first cookbook, one of Jeff's coworkers kind of said, well, how much does all this, these ingredients cost to, to write this cookbook? And Jeff looked at him and he's like, do you mean supper? You know, it's, it's just food that we would be eating anyway. Exactly. So, you know, a lot of times we'll make a little bit extra so we can do off that fancy plate to, to put aside. But really, it's just our food. And, and you know, and, and quite often we cook extra so that we can put it away in the freezer as what we call takeout night. Right. Take out take the, out freezer. the freezer. Yeah. Keep it easy. And those are a lot of the tips that are in your book, how to make those choices so that you're not hangry, as you say, hungry and angry, that you have satisfied your appetite, which I find so much with the use of fat in food, giving it that taste. And it's just so, so satisfying. Anyway, I'm sold on it. Um, I do love your cookbooks. And I'm so thankful that you had time today to sit down and talk to me about what you're doing. And Folks, I guess, can get these um, Breakwater books or the publisher. I've got it. Let's see. I've even got a tag in there for what I'm planning to make next, which is, uh, I was going to show this because the minute I opened it, uh, the Sticky Kentucky Bourbon Chicken. There it is. Author favorite. <laughs> that looks really good. I've already got it marked, ready to go. But thank you so much. And everyone can get the books, Amazon, Chapters, all the usual places. EastCoastKeto.com. And EastCoastKeto.com, East Keto East most important. So thank you so much. And everyone out there, if you have questions, fire them out there, and we'll try to answer them over the next few days. And you guys, happy cooking. Thank you. Happy right. ketoing. We'll see you <laughs> book yeah, I can't, I can't wait. And... Uh, Hopefully, we'll get a lot of people ketoing in Newfoundland, and we'll get more and more ingredients in our grocery stores, which would be ideal. Well, everyone, thanks for watching, <laughs> and have a great day. And for all your Let's Get Writing stories, check out Catherine Taylor TV on YouTube. Bye, everyone. Bye, guys. Bye.